that's going to be on later this afternoon. Oh, yeah, there is a different sporting event going on. That should be some fun for the kickers, and we are underway right now as they are just going to have some fun on these returns. And it went live. But talk, Coach yeah. talked about it. That's where they found a returner last year in the spring game is letting them go live. You're going to see some different style of football, different format in the spring game. Spring games are about celebrating all the work that went in of everybody in the spring, having a great time celebrating in front of the fans. First look at next year's team, but also putting Taylor Green here in an SEC stadium for the first time to see how he handles it. This kid, Taylor Green, 6'6", 223 pounds. That's right. He is a legit 6'6". You walk into the room with him and you're like, wait, you're the starting quarterback? <laughs> yeah, I, th I thought he was John Calipari's first recruiter at defensive <laughs> end when he walked into the room. Uh, <laughs> that was to Metcalf. So we're going to see how... Let's see, is this offense going to be vanilla? Is it going to be, you know, Bobby Petrino-esque? I think they're going to they're going to show a little bit more offensively than maybe they will defensively today. They'll kind of play a little bit of base defense. Oh, a nice spin move right there by Jaquindon Jackson. JJ, the transfer coming over from Utah, they're, they're really excited about him. He had a great year for the Utes last year. You know, he was he was a high school quarterback. Yes. And big guy, high school quarterback. Did a little bit of both at Utah as a, as, as a, a Wildcat type quarterback. Um, comes in, though, as a great running back and great addition to that they want to create the depth in the backfield. He was originally signed to go to Texas as a quarterback. Yeah. Pressure coming. Oh. That should be a sack. It is. Taylor Green gets sacked by Jaden Allen. Maybe maybe not as vanilla defensively. They brought the <laughs> corner blitz on him already. <laughs> you see it coming coming off coming off the edge right now. A little corner chop right there. Kind of got Jalen to or uh, <laughs> Taylen. Yeah, we've got we've got we Jaden, we've got Taylen, we've got Jalen, we've got a lot oh, of confusing. We got Taylen to freeze his feet right there for a second, <laughs> hold the ball, and create a second down a long situation. Rashad Dominion in the backfield now here on third down. There's some time to throw over the middle, and that pass is caught. Varkias Gumps. And you'll see that there there's the the little drive concept coming with the, the dragger underneath the dig coming in behind it so get, what, what do you mean by the dragger and the dig so it is they're gonna they were in a little drive concept so they have a guy drag underneath okay coming from the outside and the guy on the inside runs it dig in behind them they're gonna try to high low that weak side linebacker and great read by Taylor the linebacker stepped up he threw the dig in right behind it in the second window you're in a pistol formation here It's kept by the quarterback, and this is what he can do. They're going to whistle him down. He's going to get the first down, but that's what this guy brings to the equation. That, that extra dimension, and you know, you, you go Bobby Petrino's offense, you're not used to seeing zone reads. He's going to add some of these things, and you just see him on the zone read. He, he gets the pull. Now, the greatest thing about spring games is all the de defensive guys. Oh, you're down. <laughs> And Taylor said, you never would have tackled me right there. That's why, that's why the, the, the arguments come on the offense and defense side of the ball. I would have made broke that tackle. And guess what? He's probably right. <laughs> and off up the middle again to Jackson. To Quinton Jackson's had a couple of good runs here in this first series. Nice job. And, and I think what you're seeing, too, what, what Arkansas fans are going to get comfortable with seeing again that with the Bobby Petrino offense is multiple formations, playing with tight ends, physical running the ball. Uh, and, and, you know, because they think of you, think of Bobby Trino, all the pass, all the things going on. He likes to run the football and have a physical team. On second down, time to throw over the middle again, and that pass is caught by Isaiah Satania. Satania, another track guy, so he's a track guy. Taylor Green's a track guy. Jalen Braxton defensively is a track guy. You like track guys. 
right? They're fast, right? There. You look track guys. You coach that <laughs> like Florida. Speed. You like speed. But you know, one of the things you just saw right there too with this O-line's been rebuilt. And with Sam Pittman as an O-line coach, as the head coach, the time, the protection. They gave up a lot of sacks last year and something they really want to get cleaned up this year. Again, the zone read kept by the quarterback. And again, Taylor Green. Let's see. He's going to get the first down. So you see here on the, on the zone read, you just see the defensive end turn his shoulders and making the read easy right there for him. Uh, you saw that Anton Junkaj turn the shoulders, and that's an easy read for the quarterback. You really want to keep those shoulders square and try to surf down the line of scrimmage to make it a little bit harder on the read for him. Luke has a tight end in motion. Handoff again. It's Jackson. And Jaquindon Jackson's probably saying, I didn't get hit this much when I was a quarterback. <laughs> Nice balance so far, though, in this first drive. Some some good, accurate throws, some good, solid run game between the tackles with the power, and then letting Taylor, which, where you want to see. When you have a 6'6 athletic quarterback, want him out on the perimeter running. And a really good balance first drive here for the offense. You ready for the old book? Pass towards the corner. Are we going to have our first flag? No. Good defense right there by Jaheim Singletary. Jaheim a transfer all over. A little RPO action right there. And, and you saw him jump that. Jaheim from, from Jacksonville, Florida, transferred in from Georgia. Was a highly recruited corner coming out of high school. Sitting on the outcut. But you know it was impressive right there, though. Down in the red zone, he sat on a great accuracy by Taylor Green. Putting that ball high to the outside where only his receiver can catch it. Now on third and seven. Green to the back of the end zone's got a man touchdown Tyrone Broden from a 6-6 quarterback to a 6-7 wide receiver <laughs> now you see this this is that drive concept again he's gonna come see number 16 goes underneath he comes over the top on the dig goes to the second window Taylor Green puts it up high for us. You know, where do you want to put the ball when you have a big receiver? Put it up high in the back <laughs> of the end zone where he can go get it. Nobody else come. He goes, extends, makes the catch, get a foot down. Now here comes the field goal yes. PAT. It's like the NFL PATs here today. Matthew Shipley is coming on. Coach says, I know our guys can hit PATs. <laughs> I want to see them hit field goals. And Shipley... Off go. the upright is in. So now that was his attempt. Did he and call I back? I think we're going to have <laughs> another one here. Team on top of the white team here in the first quarter. Justin Kutcher alongside Dan Mullen. We saw a nice first drive right there by Taylor Green. Yeah, absolutely. He did a really good job. It was three for four on the drive. Couple nice rushes. I saw what was impressive. Hanging in the pocket. I know we know that he can make things happen with his legs. Hanging in the pocket, accurate throws down the field. And uh, that's what you want to see. The one offense came on the field, and they executed a nice clean drive all the way down. So we're going to have a kickoff here. We've got Lorando Johnson and Jordan Anthony back deep. We're going to see the red defense coming in, which is the first defense against the white offense, the number two offense. And Travis, Travis Williams and Bobby Petrino running to the other side of the field to coach those guys up. And now they're going to let a return man go, and that is Jordan Anthony. So a coach is waiting with him at the goal line. As soon as that ball goes through the end zone, he says, now you can go. Yeah, they, they want to get the return and they get the block in. So even though that would have been a touchback, they want to get the blocking scheme, the return in. So you always, you do that in practice as well. Anytime, even if it was a bad kick, anything, get the, this would have been an accurate kick. Mm -hmm. Just take the ball and go and get the timing down. Malachi Singleton, the quarterback in out of Kennesaw, Georgia. 6'1", 225 pounds. On first down, the handoff, bouncing it back this way is Augusta. Isaiah Augusta trying to switch directions. 
And you saw that on, on the zone read. Landon Jackson, their star defensive end, staying at home right there, squeezed down, kept those shoulders even, was able to come back, react back, and make the play off the cutback on the inside zone read. On second and ten, again, Augusta looking for somewhere to go. A good job by this red defense, stringing him out. And it's Selman Bridges with the tackle. Yeah, came up from the secondary there. Great job up front. Big camera ball on the inside right there. Creating penetration. They're trying to run the outside zone. Best way to stop outside zone, get penetration up the field. He and Eric Gregory inside, the two big D tackles they have inside, causing some problems. Third and 11. The defensive coordinator, Travis Williams. Dump out. And again, a nice open field tackle. This time by Jalen Braxton, the all freshman SEC member last year. He's got some high hopes for himself this year. He's a very confident player. That's what he yeah. wanted the DBs. He's setting his goals. Hey, well, I want to be the best DB in the country. I want to be the best corner in the country. I want that, that Jim Thorpe Award finalist. And you, you saw right there, they tried to run a screen. The tackle got out a little bit slow to get to him. But Jalen Braxton broke on that ball before the whole the play could get set up. And remember what he said? I can run all day. Well, yeah. guess what? He's going back he's, to return a punt. Oh, there you go. Make the tackle on third down. Run back there. Let's see. His dad was an NFL trainer, would train guys in the offseason. One of those players, Akib Talib, a Super Bowl champion. It's always here you go. The, the, the spring game, because you have guys from each team on special teams. <laughs> You're running out, making sure we get everybody. You got a little, little rainbow collage of, of, of red and white out there on the field right now. But great opportunity for these guys to catch in the stadium, in front of fans, put some pressure on some of these special teamers, see what they can do. Devin Bale. Great punt. Really good punt. Wow. Driving Braxton all the way back, and Braxton slips and falls at the 14. What a punt right there. <laughs> I don't think there's a punter issue right now. That was a boomer 65 yards. Green on first down. Comes back all the way across the field. That's a dangerous pass, but it's caught by Tyrone Broden. That's a long throw right there. It was, and good coverage on the play. They were right there with him. Got the pressure, a little boot fake one way, throw back across the other, the, the field the other way. But again, another accurate throw where it was to his receiver. And even though that's a, a long throw, a little bit dangerous, the accuracy is really impressive. Broden transfer from Bowling Green. Nice touch pass again to Broden. Broden trying to fight off the tacklers. I tell you what, it's like a high-low game with these two guys. <laughs> Great read right there. They actually brought a corner blitz on him off the zone read, and they sighted Josh. The Broden did a good job seeing the corner blitz turn, and Taylor Green saw that, whipped the ball out there to it, get it to him in space. Get your athletes the ball in space. That's that's where you, the type of offense you want to be. You want to create matchups where you get great receivers one-on-one -on -one in the open field. On first and ten. Green steps up in the pocket, takes a shot down the field, and that's out of bounds. No chance for Broden on that one. Selman Bridges there on the coverage, true freshman out of Temple, Texas. By the way, it's it's crazy to think. You know, we mentioned this person's a transfer, that person's a, tr a transfer, or this person's a true freshman. It's almost like it's more odd to hear someone say they're <laughs> but it, a, a second-year player <laughs> at the school. In today's college football world, it, it is a new world. And you said, you know, before you used to look at the development of players from one year to the next. And we talked to the coaches about it yesterday. Oh, here's Dubs. Rashad DeBinion breaks the tackles, gets the first down. T.J. Metcalf with a tackle, a pickup of 12. But, but they, have, they have 35 new players coming in January. And, that, so, and, and that's more common now. Instead of saying, hey, it, it's where is the team you're from? You're, each, each year is somewhat of an individual team. It used yes. to be in the past, but much more so now with all the new faces that come in with the transfer portal in today's college football. 
It's not easy to be a head coach anytime, especially these days. Again, that's a strong throw to Andrew Armstrong, who went up to get it. Going up against Jaden Allen, a pickup of 12 again. What did you say yesterday? What was your line <laughs> about profits? Oh, you can't go broke taking a profit right there, <laughs> right? But but you know what he does? You saw the arm strength right there that Taylor mm -hmm. Green has throwing the field comeback. That was a big time NFL type throw. They're trying to run the four verticals. The defense picked it up and he whipped it out to the comeback to the wide side of the field. First and ten. Just drops it off to his running back. A shot to Binion. There's your profit plays right there. Right yeah, there. yeah. I'll tell you, that, I, I thought the defense might come out and be a little vanilla, but they're coming after him. They're, they're showing him some different blitz looks right now, and he's doing a great job of reading the blitzes, picking it up, and making great decisions, which is what, you know, if, if you're in a Bobby Trino, anybody, you want your quarterback to be a great decision maker. Seven for nine, 83 yards for Taylor Green so far. And the pistol. Dominion pushing that pile forward. Look at him go. Get the first down with the help of the offensive line. And this is a new offensive line as well. Two new tackles and the new center. Yeah, and then they brought it, you know, Josh Braun, the right, the right guard. Great player, transfer from Florida. Know, know him very well in his family. Uh, family came to say hi before the yeah. game. But they're really happy with, with Blackstock and Carmona coming in at tackles. Really good players. They got in the transfer portal. Addison Nichols was a highly recruited kid at center. And you see that the depth that they want to create on the offensive line, especially, you know, you think of Sam Pittman as one of the great O-line coaches yes. that are out there. He takes so much pride in that O-line. I think it, was, it wasn't a great spot for them last year. Weren't running the ball as well, giving them sacks. Wanted to get that fixed. Made a change at the O-line coach, uh, bringing in Eric Mateos, who was a former GA for him. Yeah. And now he said that the roles flipped. Sam gets to be uh, on the field. He's the O-line GA out there coaching. Green will go to the end zone. Did he get both feet in? Did he get foot in? He did. Touchdown, Andrew Armstrong. 20-yard touchdown pass. Another one perfectly placed by Taylor Green. What a beautiful throw. When you throw those go routes right there, you want the ball coming to the outside, high and outside to the outside shoulder of the receiver. And Taylor Green right there hanging in the pocket, man coverage, dropping it perfectly. To Andrew Armstrong, their leading receiver last year, is back. They have, they have over 90% over 90 of their receiving productions, production from last year's back. Taylor Green's coming in with some targets to throw to. And he just dropped a beautiful dime right there on the outside shoulder. Now we have Shipley on. Again, just trying to test his range. And that time, no good. 13-0. Hot linebacker coming into this season. Malachi Singleton back in that quarterback with this white team. And on first down, the handoff is to Augusta. Hudson Clark makes the tackle. Hudson Clark is just, as his coaches say, you can't get away from him. He's just a football fifth, player. Fifth year player, and he's done it his whole career here. He's, he gets around the ball, makes plays, make, has a butt interceptions throughout his career, gets everybody lined up. Always the right spot on the field. Pass over the middle. That is complete. Nicely done. Hauled in by Dasmond James. A 12 yard completion from Singleton to James. Great job hitting him here and set a little slant flat there. You saw the back swinging out of the backfield. Really good accurate throw into tight coverage. So first down for the white team offense. Play action thrown behind the intended receiver. That was James again. A little RPO action right there. Singleton's has got to flip his feet just a little bit quicker to make that accurate throw. He had him. On, on what we'll call a skinny post off the backside. If the linebacker steps up to stop the run. You can RPO, pull the ball, and throw it right over his head. Just a little bit behind him right there. Dominic Johnson now in the backfield. Hey, 
And off up the middle. And the ball comes loose, but they're going to whistle this one down. They're going to say the ball was down. Brad Spence knocked it loose. A nice zone replay. Good decision right there. All right, good call. No, he, he, was was, he was down. He was down. We're yep. not going to replays. Nope. I don't nope. think we have the replay officials here today. <laughs> we are the replay officials, okay? <laughs> Now third and six after a pickup of four. Pressure coming, and they're going to blow this one dead. A sack. Brad Spence with the sack. And that's exactly what Sam Pittman wants to see from his number one defense. Absolutely. And Travis Williams said, hey, we need to be a little bit more aggressive this year in getting pressure on people. And not just do it playing man coverage. Saw that they both inside backers blitzed, little zone blitz they had right there, and Spence able to get through, create the pressure, create the sack, and help help the one defense get off the field. This red defense. Well, Max Fletcher is going to punt this one. Travis Williams, defensive coordinator. The first punt we saw today went 65 yards. It's an end over end. And again, it's Braxton back there. There's only 37 yards. So in the punting situation right now, advantage Devin Bale. Yeah. Well, everybody's out here. They're competing for yeah. jobs today. And, you know, and they, you can say great programs. That'll be a big test of where they're at early in the season. On first down, it's a handoff. Jackson trying to get outside, and he gets pushed out of bounds with one second. Nope, there goes the final second of this first quarter. So, on to join us right now. Coach, thank you so much for this. Uh, you know, the big story, there are a couple of them, but Taylor Green, your quarterback, yeah. the transfer, what have you seen from him so far? What do you like? Great command, uh, throwing the ball very well. He's getting protected up there nice. Wide receivers have played well all spring. As you can tell, they're making some contested catches, and that's what we need. But we've got length at wide out, and we've got a quarterback who can get it close to him, you know, and they'll go make the play. <laughs> hey, you have to be happy, though, the protection. We were talking about the protection he's getting up front right now and the ability to run the ball. I tell you what, both backs have run the ball hard so far, and they've had some pretty good lanes to run with this new O-line that you have this they, year. They really have, and you know, Coach Mateus has done a great job with the offensive line, getting those transfers in, have really uh, not only made us a better offensive line, but made us a better offensive line room. These guys are great kids. They've really developed in there, and and uh, obviously we're running the ball hard. 22's made some, JJ's made some good runs, Seven's made some good runs, but they're running downhill and running physical, and that's, that's who we are, and that's what we're getting back to. And, and tell me about uh, that smile that you had on your face talking about you getting back in that old line room right now as a head coach getting out there and being able to go back and do what you love and coach the old line some I got to be the oldest GA in America <laughs> you know uh, I have to be but I'll tell you this I'm enjoying the heck out of it I think the kids enjoy it I'm so gracious Eric thinks I can help the old line I believe I can I think I have but he gets all that credit but I'm having so much fun uh, coaching them in individual. I'm just having a great time. You're having a great time coach And it looks like from the sounds of it Bobby Petrino is having a great time as well Not worried about being a head coach as we see Taylor Green roll out and complete the pass nicely to Jordan Anthony a long completion there What is it like having Bobby Petrino back here at Arkansas helping and leading this offense? Well, that's everything. I mean he's done a wonderful job. He's a good man been good to me been good to our players very knowledgeable uh, genius gets thrown around he's let's say this he's damn good <laughs> yeah. calling plays and uh, he's also a good man a good mentor and helping me uh, with some things off the field as well Taylor Green called him the mad scientist uh, he is that <laughs> and uh, you know I love the things that we're doing angle blocking and think some things that we're doing in the run game like this we go. how about this one how was that one JJ. I'm missing the game by the way but I think the team's doing good without me yeah. <laughs> hey they just hey, we, we they ran the, the outside zone to the weak side as you said right there they're gonna give that to you I see That's, it yeah there we, there we go and I, I think a horse collar tackle too 22 is a good ball player, man. He's a good player, tough. He, and, 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 and
Automatic first down. the distance. Yep, it's plus 27 well, on he, that. I don't know what you do on that. You take the penalty, you're the head coach, both <laughs> sides of your team. Yeah. I guess you take it, huh? <laughs> hey, hey, coach, uh, yesterday, you know, here, here you have your, your starters in the red zone, but you talked to us a lot about the, the chemistry with yeah. this team, the meshing of this team. Yeah. What has been the difference? Why do you think they've come together so quickly? Well, I think it goes along with the quarterback. You know, the quarterback's the guy that makes us go. I think he's become an, been an ultimate team guy. Uh, we brought in a couple of older offensive linemen that have gelled that in. We had the nucleus of the guys on defense, you know, with Ball and Jackson. We've got a mature football team. And, you know, what we're trying to get through is it doesn't matter who gets the credit. We all do when we win. And so that's kind of how the feel of it. Uh, you can feel it on our football team, and I really like where we're at right now. No Another run right here by Jackson, pushing towards the end zone, and he's in again. The only Jackson. job I'm doing right now is, is it the one field goal team or not? So <laughs> Fountain can do that for right now. Hey, Coach, one thing I saw with the players, and I know as, as a coach that you love it and that you have to be able to go feel, is that the guys like each other. They, 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 they smiles do. around each other. When you have a team that likes each other, you have a chance to have a special year. you got a big-time chance to have a special year. And to be honest with you, without it, you have no chance. Yeah. And uh, so we've worked a lot on that. But you have to give the credit to all the, the players and the maturity that they have. And I just really like where we're at right now. Well, what a what a drive right there to Quinton Jackson. Six carries, 62 yards. So you've got your starting quarterback off to a good start. You got your running back off to a good start. The defense is off to a good start. Coach, what are you doing down there? <laughs> oh, I'm just enjoying the day, you know. <laughs> hey, look, guys, I've got really good coaches, I got, you know, and I've got a good football team. And I'm um, just enjoying watching them perform. Well, we're enjoying it as well, Coach. Thanks so much for joining us. Best of luck. Enjoy the rest of today. Thank you. Go Hogs. All right. Hogs are winning right now, 19 0. <laughs> Jacoby Criswell, a transfer out of North Carolina, is in now at quarterback. The handoff on first down to Braylon Russell. This is true freshman. Another guy, true freshman, comes in, you know, second semester. Another, they think he's going to be special. Yeah. No, another great play, though. But linebacker Brad Spence right there, you see him race into the ball, filling the hole, patience behind the play, wrapping up, making the tackle. Brandon Russell, 6-1. Get this, get this. 252. Yeah, playing running back. Yeah. As, as a true freshman right there. No, they think we, we, we've, we've seen, you know, Dubs, Rashad DeBinion, and, and J.J. Jaquinda Jackson lighten it up with the one offense. But they are really excited about his, not just his running ability, his ball skills and everything that he can do. C.J. Brown on the reception, another true freshman. You know, it's funny, when, when I hear about a running back being 6'1", 252, the guy that I think of is Jerome Bettis, the yeah. bus. Yeah. His freshman year at Notre Dame, he actually played fullback. Yeah. And they say because of that year, being fullback made him a better running back. And it's and the fullback, we talked to Bobby. We, I wouldn't be surprised at some point. You see him lining up in some different spots, playing two backs. You know, if you go back, Bobby Petrino, there's some high formation in his background. And go back to a little bit of old school football that way with a big back and learning because now he's a fullback that can catch it coming out of the backfield. You hand it to him to run it. He's a weapon. Number 67. Five-yard penalty, still third down. Josh Street. Well, good thing, good thing Coach Pittman's off the, the headphone right there when you have a false start on the O-line. He might have thrown the headphones down talking to us to run out there on the field on that one right there. Uh, so now it's Russell and Augusta in the backfield. Pressure coming, escaping on the run. And now they're going to blow whistled and say he's down. It's a great start for the red defense and the one defense of what you want to see if them come out, make plays, you know, make it make it happen. Shut it, shut it down in the run game, shut it down in the pass game. They haven't pressured a whole lot. Be able to play base defense, make your fits, make your plays. That's what the coaches want to see out of that first group right there is, is to be able to come out and, and dominate. That was Nico Davaye. Who made that stop now their opportunity for a punt and you know we talk a lot about this but really the kicking issue 
that's right now where you can make a really big impact. You can right. you can make a name for yourself. Yeah, yeah, it is. And I mean, you're, you know, the the, the kickers we talk about, they're here in the stadium playing in front of fans, and at practice, no one's there. You know, I had a kicker once tell me, Coach, you kind of make me nervous out here sometimes. I said, Well, you know, I'll be there on game day, so uh, <laughs> don't you can't be nervous. But you put them in this situation in front of fans in a live situation in the stadium to see how they perform. This was with the wind, a low kick. And that's going to be down perfect. at the one. <laughs> a 69-yard punt by Sam Dubwick might not have looked pretty. Yeah, but guess what? Got the job done. Doesn't matter. It didn't look pretty. Came out, but he got the roll all the way down and put it out of bounds at the one-yard line. Birdie coming up. Understands the game of football, has a great offensive mind, and excited. The people here are really excited to have him back. And I know, boy, he had the biggest smile on his face of, he, he took that head coaching hat off <laughs> where you're dealing with a lot of different things. And he got to go back into the offensive coordinator and coach the quarterbacks. And well, he looked relaxed, he did. having a great time. Now here's Green from his own end zone. Go, go, go. Heads off to Dubs. And Dominion breaks a couple tackles, gets ripped down just shy of the 20-yard line. That's a good run by Rashad Dominion. He'll get 19. It's a great way to start when you're back to the wall right here. Look, you see a little zone blocking scheme. Great job getting up on the second level there by uh, by the center, Addison Nichols, Josh Braun at right guard. They're, they're running right behind those guys. Get up there and an explosive play to get out of your own end zone. Play action, stepping up. Oh, they're going to whistle him down. Wow. What argument? Oh, That's your spring man. ball right there. We're going to go to a replay review. <laughs> this is going to be overturned. <laughs> Lorando Johnson, he gets credit for the sack. Is that a chant of let them play that I just heard? <laughs> right there. Look at this, coming off the, good job on the pressure though. Well, He's you know not you're not allowed down. to touch him, but you gotta bend more. I'll tell you what, as the defense players always said, man, if he got a step closer to the quarterback, he might get an earful from Coach Pittman right behind him. On second and 17, the wide receiver slipped. That was Isaac Tuslaw. Summon uh, Bridges, the true freshman right there on the coverage right here. Great tight coverage. 6'2", fre true freshman right there. Great length and size when you got to go, especially with some of the size of the receivers they have to go play against over here. Third and 17. Are you trying to pick up a first down? Or are you trying Heck to yeah. give yourself some yards so you can punt out of here? Uh, it's not a, well, uh, in the fall, we're trying to pick up some yards. Today, we're taking a shot down the field. There's a pass complete <laughs> again. And the pass this time is to Isaiah Satania. That's the, the first stop by the uh, the 2D against the 1-0 the on, on the sack, the controversial sack, as yeah, we'll say. On very the, controversial. I mean, already Twitter's going crazy. Oh, saying hey, no way. In the locker room right there, that's going down as, uh, you know, there's the discussion. <laughs> I would have had him. There's no way uh, af afterwards. But... Uh, Great stop, and that, that'll build confidence because defensively, you want to make sure you have the depth sort of to build the confidence with some guys on that white defense that are trying to, they're fighting for playing time. Maybe not yeah. a starting position, but, but playing time and rotation time during the game. Devin Bale will kick, will punt right here. He had the 65 yarder before into the wind again. This wow, one. look at this again. Satania going back. Um, I would say so far, I, th I think well, that's solidified right Devin there. Devin Bale, 65 <laughs> and 63 yards, respectively, on his first two punts. Yeah, he, 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 I think he's comfortable right now kicking in the stadium right now and has solidified the punting position so far. That was Go. into the wind for the second time. <laughs> wow. He, yeah, you should be fired We're up. watching him, though. He was turning him over beforehand, before the game. He, he's got a big leg right there. That's a weapon. You know, you can... You flip the field that way. You know, that's gonna that's gonna have Pat McAfee talking about him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, absolutely. Yeah, look at him. He's juiced <laughs> up about it all. <laughs> but you know, you look and, and football eyes, little things you talk about afterwards, even in the spring game play in these situations. That was a drive that started at the own one yard line. And now you flip the field position to put your your defense in a good position to make them have to drive the length of the field. 
Jacoby Criswell back in at quarterback with Braylon Russell at the running back. On first down, it's Russell. And it's going to take a game yeah. to tackle that <laughs> young man. They, they brought a couple. I, I, I think Coach Petrino's over there, and Coach Pittman maybe said to him, hey, I know he's with the two offense. Let's let's run the ball a little bit yeah. here. Let's see. Who, <laughs> let's make sure that this this one defense, that this red defense, is ready to go tackle the big boy. Braylon Russell out of Benton High School in Arkansas, so a local kid. Nice toss down the sideline, and we've got no pass interference. The pass was intended for C.J. Brown. Jalen Braxton there on the coverage. What, what do you think makes Jalen Braxton such a good DB? Well, one, certainly confidence. You know, we saw that yep. meeting with him yesterday. One of the things you want in corners, you're going to play, they're going to play a lot of man coverage here uh, in, in Travis Williams' scheme. And so they want a guy that's confident. Say, hey, but put me out on an island. I'm okay. I'll go take care of my guy and eliminate him. You see him right there breaking on the ball. The same guy, Jalen Braxton, breaking on the ball. Great job getting the arm around to go tip it away. That you have the confidence that you want to be the guy. Come throw at me. You know, he was saying that. I want to win the Thorpe Award. They yeah. better throw at me for me to do that, to put up the stats. And, uh, and he's willing to take on that responsibility. Jalen Braxton, also a bit of a foodie. We got, yeah. we, you know, he was giving us recommendations of where to go for all, dinner. All his different restaurants all around town, even though he did say on draft night, if he's getting his draft night dinner, his mom's going to go cook him some good soul food at home. He, he's going I, I, right I might to have home. to head over to that yeah. house, he said, <laughs> to, to get some of that right there. He said it's pretty good. So that's one of those things on recruiting visits. You find out who the foodies are, right? Because you want to go to the, the coaches go to them to meet the family. And mom cooks a great meal. OK, so what's what's a meal that sticks out to you on a recruiting visit? You know what? I, I love going everywhere. But I'll tell you, you do the you'd always go do your New Orleans swing uh -huh. right there. Yeah, yeah. And the hardest one is when you have multiple visits in the same day. <laughs> because you're, you're offended if you don't eat. Well, yeah, you have to eat. Yeah. That's why coaches <laughs> after recruiting season look big right there. You're sitting there. You're like, okay, this is my fourth jambalaya of the day right now. And we got some etouffee coming. I mean, he, he, uh, but especially you're down here in the south. You get the barbecue. You got the sofa. You get it all. Taylor Green, long pass down the sideline. Perfect throw. Luke has the tight end. But I've, I've been impressed with his, not, not just the arm strength, but the accuracy of these throws. Look at off the play action, play action, great protection up front. But he drops that ball into a perfect position for his tight end coming down the field. Great, pro, you know, Coach Pittman will tell you, great protection right yeah. there. <laughs> I don't even think he saw the throw or the catch down the field. Great protection up front. But that was a problem last year with the O-line, and that, they're, they're much improved. That was the first real mistake we've seen from Green, the high throw on an easy completion pass. Well, and I think you've seen the arm strength, and I think, you know, you'll see Coach Petrino grab him, saying right there, take a little off of that one right there. He, get, he, he, he put that in on the slant a little bit high, but also a fastball right there. And, and he can just take a little bit off of those underneath ones. Second down and 10 from the 22. Jackson in the eye formation. Here is Jackson, another hard run, gets upended as he crosses the 20 to the 19 yard line. You know, you talked about the food. Taylor Green, who's from Texas, actually grew up with Jalen Braxton. He said one of his favorite things about coming back here to the South, he's like, the food. He's like, I, I put on <laughs> six to eight pounds already. Yeah, not, and not just the training table with, <laughs> with, with the nutrition program here at Arkansas. I, it, it's coming up, I and you get, you get, you know, the barbecue, some great fried chicken, some, you know, I mean, you're getting around to all the places, all the cat, what was it, the, the, the cat catfish. Fish. Here's Green, took a lot off that one to Has. Has. Ooh. Whoa, big hit. Got to make sure that was Metcalf, whose helmet came off. Got to make sure he's all right. T.J. Metcalf from Birmingham, Alabama. You know, there, there are so many things that you're looking at at a spring game, but probably the most important thing is that you get through injury-free. Yeah. 
Metcalf's a hitter, though. You saw the play before, him flying up and launching, making the tackle on the run. Threw himself into that tackle right there as well. All right, good to see him up, yeah. walking. Yeah. A little wave to everybody. up watch him come in here and just throw himself into that right there i mean it was a clean hit he <laughs> oh, didn't yeah. hit him with the head it was a no, shoulder he, he turned and he just caught caught the side of his head the helmet popped off he'll shake it off it's first and goal from the five handoff again up the middle and that'll get a yard so now second and goal from the four but one of the one of the things this red offense getting a lot of good work at if you're, you're the head coach in a game situation you see he's put up some huge numbers Taylor green has accuracy and all that but they've gotten they've gotten red zone work back to the wall work third mm -hmm. down work every game situation uh Taylor green has been put in and he's managed every one of those situations excellently <laughs> even the checks they're making the checks right here down on the goal line Toss to Jackson, and he's going to walk in for the end zone. That was almost too easy. So, hey, give credit to Taylor Green. He checked everything down, and he did the right play. Saw the look, and it, I, I'm sure they had two plays called in the, in the huddle right there, an inside run, outside run. Saw the defense come inside. Checks to the toss to the outside, and a walk-in touchdown right there. Nine carries, 70 yards, two touchdowns for Jaquindon Jackson. All right, so again, the extra points are not your typical extra points. This is a test that Sam Pittman is doing right now for his kickers. He wants to see who can make the field goal with some pressure on. So Matthew Shipley, the transfer out of Hawaii, is on right now for this extra point or field goal attempt. And with the wind blowing, Mahalo. Whoa, that just got in. <laughs> right there. <laughs> 26 to nothing, red team leading the white team. Honestly, in college, had to be Johnny Manziel. Okay. Uh, when it was at Texas A&M, I mean, he was right. running all over the place. We, we couldn't catch him. You know, he was scrambling, running. I mean, it, <laughs> it was it, all improvised. It, it was, well, they, he made the runs, made the throws, made the reads, but when he didn't, he just started running all over the place, and we never got close to catching him anywhere. K.J. Jackson now in at quarterback, swings it out to Braylon Russell, so you see the hands of Russell making the play, but then there's Landon Jackson there for the tackle. Landon Jackson... The leader of this defense, we'll hear from him later, but Landon Jackson, number 40, what a story he is. Just got married last Saturday. Last Saturday. I mean, he missed, he even missed the scrimmage, which was... <laughs> which, controversial. It was controversial, like, within his family. I'm not... His wife was okay with it. Yes. Right? She, yes. And <laughs> off. You're getting to see some of the future right here, though. They're really excited. This true freshman, K.J. Jackson, coming in from Montgomery, Alabama. Uh, you know, and, and with, with Braylon Russell, those are, you know, those are for Arkansas fans, two names that they're going to be excited about, hopefully for years to come. Russell and Augusta in the backfield here with Jackson on third and six. Pass over the middle, complete, nicely done. I'm sorry, KJ Jackson, they're excited. I mean, 6'4", 223. That's why Bob, Coach Petrino is so excited in this quarterback room. They got some pretty looking dudes in that, in that, 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 that room right now. I, I'm telling you, I mean, they are recruiting some size. Dasmond James, the redshirt freshman, he's only 6'2", who made the catch. <laughs> this pass, incomplete. The intended receiver was James. They're not shy about but this corner blitz coming in this game right now. They're they're coming after the young freshman and seeing, making him make quick decisions right now. Fourth and six, going to go for it. Or is it second down and ten? Second and ten. It's second and ten. Excuse yeah, me. Yeah, we. It, they it's a spring. The spring game. They can change things up out there sometimes. The handoff to Augusta. Nowhere to go. Cameron Ball again. Landon Jackson there. The two of those guys. Man. They're going to be so big for this team. 
this season. Well, you know, in the SEC, I mean, the SEC is so much about the defensive line play. You, you got to be good up front on the defensive front. And they they have experience and veterans. And as Coach Pittman said, they have a mature team. And when you have that, especially in the defensive, in your front seven, you have an opportunity to be good. Jackson with time. Takes a shot to the sideline and completes it to C.J. Brown. Nice job toe-tapping along the sidelines. If that were on Sunday, it would have counted. Another, another freshman. Freshman to freshman coming in here. And look at this great throw right here. Setting his feet. Letting that rip. Look at the, the ball placement on the outside. Great catch. Some of the... It's the fun thing about spring game. You get to see some of these new guys that you're going to see in the fall. These, you know, that freshman reporting day, it's like Christmas Day, that first practice. You get to go see what, what you got right there and, and what these guys, the young players, can do. And you bring it up, but we have to talk about it. We've talked so much about the transfer portal. The transfer portal opens on April 16th, and it goes for 15 days. So you have the spring game to evaluate and now the transfer portal's open i mean it's the craziness that goes on it's the constant that's one of the things to me of, of, of if they want to look at fixing things is, is let's get it get it organized get yes. it set Here, here's your time so that at some point you know what your team's going to be for next year jackson in opposite role to the tight end posca and andreas posca Transfer of Eastern Michigan, originally from Copenhagen, Denmark. It's a good recruiting trip, huh? That's go. that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> you don't. I don't. You don't usually make those. Those guys come play somewhere here. They, they're going to visit you. You say that's a that's a tough one sometimes. Uh, <laughs> the best food you had in in, in Denmark? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he's learned some new dishes here in Arkansas that they don't serve in Denmark. <laughs> On third and eight, you know, it's crazy. I went to dinner last night. I was tired. I just wanted a salad. Are you a Seinfeld fan? Yeah. What they came the, out with? The big salad? It was the big salad. <laughs> I've never seen something that big. I finished it. Don't worry. But it was the big salad. It was the big salad. Did it, did it say big salad on the menu? <laughs> no. <It> just, <laughs> <laughs> the people next to me were like, whoa. <laughs> ah, fourth down opportunity here for the young quarterback. Jackson, pressure coming up the middle, dumps it off to his running back, Russell. And Russell, we, we heard he can catch the ball. He's shown he can make the adjustments and catch. Yeah, he, he does. They were excited about that, of his ball skills. For such a big guy, has great skills. You've seen that making the catches. Good screen pass. I mean, they were heating up these young guys right there defensively, again, with the zone blitz that they've, they, they've been experimenting more with this spring um, and finding ways to create pressure with the zone pressures. They were able to do that. They had a good call into the screen. Just good reaction time by the defense. You've mentioned this before, but in this game, the coaches, especially Coach Pittman, has had the chance to see different situations. Now you're getting a two-minute situation. 147 to go. You've got your starters on the field. What do you do in the two minutes? Well, this is a, a critical because you look at last year and a disappointing year for Coach Pittman, but they were one in five in one-score games. And you're talking about one-score games against Alabama, LSU, but I mean, games that came down to a final possession of the game and they, they want to see how do we fix those things? How do we make those decisions to get better? Wow, they're going to blow this play dead. They'll take the sack by Carson Dean. That's a great coaching a moment timeout. for, for Taylor Green right there. Green. Would he have been sacked? Would he not? That's one of the things he brings to the table. But this you see the pressure coming up inside right here. Again, the zone blitz bringing both backers inside, but dropping the DNs. Maybe tackle, maybe not. But in those situations, Coach Petrino is going to go over and say, hey, we, you know, this is a two-minute drill. we got to get rid of the ball. If it's not there, get rid of it. We'll play the next play. Save the time on the clock. Do not take the sack. You're better just throwing it away. Do not take the sack and let us save the timeout. And you know what Taylor Green is saying? Coach, I would have broken that three from like 40 <laughs> yards up the middle. Come yeah. on. Oh, uh, yeah. You see the headphone, the new technology coming into college football, being able to talk to the quarterback and, I guess the nice thing for Coach Petrino is Taylor can't talk back to him on that one right there. He didn't have to hear it. Taking a shot. His man again, and it's number five. 
Tyrone Broden, 6'6 to 6'7 for 23 yards, and you can go hurry up. You don't have to. You got a minute 34. This is getting the, get the call. Take his time. Make the right decision. Use the clock. Get your protection right. Make sure everybody's on the same page. Now make the quick decision. Rolling out to his right. On the run, throws, and he completes the pass to Andrew Armstrong. So there he is with his legs, buying some more time. That's one of the things that you said, and you asked who the toughest guy to play against is quarterbacks that can extend plays. Quarterbacks that can make things happen. When the original read breaks down, you see him, it's not there, not there. It's the ability to extend the play, keep his eyes down the field, make an accurate throw. Check down here. And I thought we had a whistle, maybe we did it. It's a touchdown to Jaquindon Jackson. They're not sure? Hold yeah, on. they're not sure. Coach Pittman just waved his hand saying, no, 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 no. Hang on, hang on. Well, we're going to see what's going to happen. Well, in the spring game, it's again one of those, was it a sack, was it not? Could he have gotten rid of the ball? But a good, quick decision. I think they're going to call it a touchdown. But you, but you see the decision, what, what you want to do right here. You saw the corner blitz coming. Quick decision, replace the blitzer with the ball. Changed his arm angle right there to make that throw. Walk into, I think there was a whistle, so, but you know what, it's a spring game. Again, they can argue about it in the locker room afterwards. You know, <laughs> you're seeing what you want to see. The offense is playing well, the number ones. The defense, number ones, playing well. He had a minute and 47 seconds to take them down the field. He didn't even take 47 seconds. No, right down the field. A couple of big throws. You saw a great throw from the pocket. You saw him extend the play, getting out of the pocket, making an accurate throw on the run down the field, and right there, standing into the blitz, getting the ball out of his hands with a quick decision. Now you see him go right over. This is the thing that the coaches have said that is most impressive about him. Right over with the team, talking about what happened on the field. That his leadership, his it factor, they went out for the first practice, and Coach Petrino tells, said, hey, he didn't say anything. Right. And he ran right in as the number one quarterback took control that his leadership, not just on the field, his leadership off the field. He has, as us coaches like to say, the first thing Coach Pittman said, he has the it factor. Yeah. And everyone will define what the it factor is. And as a football coach, you know. You know what the <laughs> it factor is. And if you have to define it or you say, hey, does if, boy, boy, how do you teach him the it factor? You don't teach him. The, the, you have the it factor, and he has that. You know, there is something that stood out to me as well. We had the chance. We we're lucky enough to sit down with Taylor Green yesterday. He arrived early to the meeting. Oh, yeah. He has a presence. You felt it in our meeting. He, he walked in, and I thought, boy, you know, he's on his official visit here. Came to say hello for the for Coach Calipari. Perry coming over on the yeah. Coach Calipari's basketball <laughs> team. Um, K.J. Jackson has it knocked down by the newly married Landon Jackson, who will be taking his honeymoon to Turks and Caicos. <laughs> it was interesting, he said about, about the wedding. They planned it last year. He hadn't made his decision when they planned the wedding day, whether he was going to declare for the draft or come back. So he tried to set it at a time that would work for both. And it seemed to. <laughs> On second down. Oh, nice open field tackle right there. Keon Stewart went low, transferred to TCU, wrapped him up. Great learning experience here for the young K.J. Jackson, the young quarterback. And these young wideouts to get in the two-minute. They're getting an opportunity for a two-minute situation as well. Pressure up the middle, complete to C.J. Brown, and Brown trying to run to get out, and he can't, and he's down. And that's one they're going to teach him right there, of the, the situation. So that was third down. The stop, the clock will stop on a first down right there. Catch that ball, get vertical. Get, you know, always like say, first downs are out of bounds in a two-minute situation. Uh -huh. But don't forget about the first down part of it. So he's going to, they're going to coach up the young receiver. You saw him trying to get to the sideline. You can put a foot in the ground, go get us another yard or two, get the first down. That'll stop the clock as well for us in a situation uh, and not put us in the fourth down here. And they call a timeout, but you mentioned that, right? And, and knowing the situation, this is a spring game. Fans are here. You're playing in front. It's on TV. A freshman 
how long does it take for a freshman or a player to actually have the game slow down and they could think like, oh, wait, I could actually plant and do this. I know what's going on. Absolutely. You know, a lot of these guys, they're learning the plays, formations. Where do I line up? What do I do? And they're not always aware of the situation that's going on in this game. It's going to be a handoff and going to be just short. A stop by the defense. Augusta could not get the couple yards. So this defense led by Landon Jackson will get off the field. Landon Jackson, 6-7. And I believe that. that's going to be the end of the that half. The of yeah, the both teams half. got it. Both teams right there. Got a two-minute situation. Coach saw what he needed to Arkansas. This is a, a, a program and a, a fan base that expects championships. Yeah. Kyle Gallegos will kick off here. And a little bit of a return. Nope. And now they're going to blow the whistle and mark this one dead. Maybe, maybe some of these, right? They got his flag. Yeah. <laughs> so we are joined now by Taylor Green. And Taylor, thank you so much for joining us. Justin Cutcher, Dan Mellon up here. Uh, Want to get your take on what you thought your first action as an Arkansas Razorback. Oh, I thought it was, I thought it was good, you know, but it can always be better. You know, Petrina was on me on a couple of plays in my reads, you know, <laughs> he, he expects perfection out of me, but that's what I, that's what I love, you know, just executing every single play and you're not getting tired of that. It, it's funny how those coaches work, right? You don't always get the pat on the back Facts. all the time right there after Facts. making, did you, did you tell him like, did you see my actors? Do you see me drop it on the, on the deep crossing routes down the field? <laughs> He, no. he, he wasn't into that. No, one, he right? wasn't. He said he, he don't care about that. He, he cares about the next play. You know, it's always it's always the next play and uh, uh, doing my job and uh, executing at a, at a high level. Tim, well, how's this adjustment with all the new technology with getting him in your ear every play? How's that working out? Oh, it's pretty cool. You know, just hearing his voice. You know, uh, going back and forth with you know signals and and his um, and him calling the plays. You know, I think it's pretty cool. I mean. It, uh, we've been practicing in the spring, so <laughs> it's, really, it's really, I feel like, you know, it really helps us, you know, just envision the play because when he uh, says in your ear, it helps us, you know, um, key into what we have to do at each and every play. So, Taylor, uh, yesterday when we were talking, you referred to him as the mad scientist. Do you, do you say it to him, to his face? Nah, I, mean, <laughs> I would say I just let him do him, you know, I just let him uh, draw the plays and, you know, uh, dissect the defense and, and I, all I got to do is you know soak everything up and, and, and go play ball yeah what was it like though just being out there uh, you're six six you're throwing to a receiver who's six seven yep. and Tyrone Broden oh he definitely makes it he definitely makes it easy you know uh, all I got he, he tells me all the time you know just put it up and I'm gonna make a play him and Drew you know they're really big targets and, you know it makes my job easier you know just to have a big frame and I already know they're going to catch and they made some fantastic catches today and I'm I'm really happy and really excited uh, for this fall. That's got to be a lot of confidence that first half you guys played with it's, it's what you wanted to see I think what the coaches wanted to see the clean execution everybody coming out making plays the O-line giving you time. Facts. That's a great thing for you guys to build off of what, what's next now what what are your mind what are the next steps we got to take to get ready for the season. You know we just got to go back uh, we have uh, meetings on Monday and just Always we can get better, you know, even the even the little details, you know, just being crisp and being clean, you know, but it's, it was a cool, cool atmosphere here. You got the fans here, you know, uh, it's a beautiful day. So uh, I'll say the next step is uh, cleaning everything up and just getting ready for the fall. Taylor, one last question for you. Uh, speaking with everybody, whether it's coaches, teammates, whatever, they talk about your leadership qualities. What do you think or why do you think makes you a good a good leader? I would say, you know, I'm a, I would call myself, you know, a servant leader, you know, anything I tell my, I told my teammates, you know, anything and everything, you know, that they need help on, you know, I'm there, you know, whether it's a, it's a ride or whether it's, they need help with the playbook, I'm always there no matter the time, you know, so I'm always, I'm always talking to them and always, you know, just, uh, we call it, you know, just a brothers, you know, uh, it's not really a team, it's not really just one player, it's, it's a team and uh, we call it, you know, embracing the hog and embracing and uh, being together and that's what, that's what I love, and that's what uh, we're trying to build here. Well, embrace the hog, embrace the food. I know you've embraced love the food. The food. <laughs> love the food. What's the post game meal? Oh, I don't know yet. I don't know. My fam here, so it depends on it depends on uh, what they're feeling. Cause you know, gotta gotta love the fam. I appreciate them for coming out. Shout out my fam. So. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, Taylor. Thanks so much. Congrats. Enjoy the rest of the spring and the Thank summer, you. and get ready for the fall. Thank you. All right, Taylor Green, the new quarterback here for the Arkansas Razorbacks, just a good, good kid.
And, and he is a kid, but he's a transfer to Boise State, and there's a reason for high hopes for the, for him. Well, you just see even talking to him right there. I mean, the presence he has, we talked about it. He came Full into the meeting with us yesterday, has great presence about him. And you saw the leadership he brought, and all the coaches kept talking about that it factor, how he gets around the guys. Guys that have that, and you see him wherever they go. The One of the great things about it factor guys, he can get after guys. He can go into the weight room. He can get after them, coach them hard, demand of them, and they all still want to go hang out with them afterwards. Yeah. That's what you see, and you see he kind of has that factor, that 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 it factor yeah. about him, and then you put it with the talent that we saw out here today. Uh, that, you know, Coach Pittman's got to be pretty excited. He's got the new leader of his team uh, at the quarterback position. I can't help but think of, you know, coaches, and Coach, you would say this, I'm sure, when your best player is your hardest worker, you're in really good shape. You, that's what you want, you know, because he's going to go to when he's sitting there and he's demanding, and everybody around him can listen to those demands, but they buy in because they know he's going to go do it. You know, and you look at all the great ones. I mean, I've had a bunch. Right? You go to a Dak Prescott or a Tim Tebow. Those those guys are at the workouts early and pushing people, and their their teammates respond to it. And you see Taylor Green with that type of attitude, that he's going to not just be a great player. He lifts everybody up around him and makes them better, both on and off the field. KJ Jackson takes the high snap, gets hit, and that's going to be intercepted. Yes, it is. Picked off by Akari Johnson right along the sideline. And Akari, another true freshman, just came in early right now. You're seeing, you know what, as a coach, you're seeing these young guys. You really want to see them come out and make plays. You see it a little bit, watch it, but just that, that, that little hesitation on the throw. Jackson comes off the hash, high points the ball, gets one foot down, interception. Great play right there by him, to, to, by Akari Jackson, making the break on the ball. And, and a, for, you know, for KJ, great, the young quarterback, good little learning moments right there, trying to hold the safety how you have to be. And we talk about Taylor Green. One of the great things you'll see is for a young quarterback like KJ Jackson, to have a Taylor Green, mm. and you watch how he prepares, how he learns, how he leads. You get to go see it. That's a great learning experience for a young quarterback to have that type of guy around as well. And also the relationship with Jalen Braxton. You know, Jalen Braxton, when he picks off Taylor Green during practice, they'll actually talk about it. And, and, <laughs> and he'll tell them why he was able to pick him off, what he, what, what saw. he saw. Again, it goes back to being a team, not trying to worry about yourself, but trying to make the team as great as it can be. And that was, that was a big point last year for Sam Pittman saying, you know, a four and eight season, he had all those close games that, that were losses, but he said, I learned that accountability for everybody, staying the course with accountability gives you a better chance to win. Yeah, because you, you look at the margin for error in the Southeastern Conference is so small. When you go one, one and five in those tight one score games, if that's five and one, and you're talking about three plays, one, maybe two, three plays a game, Right, the difference maybe between them competing for a championship and them having a bad year. Yeah, that's how small the margin for error is. And I think for him, the even he said the accountability with the coach. Hey, trust it. Stay the course. Stick what we're doing. We're not far off. And mm -hmm. we always talk about accountability. When when you look, it's pretty easy. If you know, tell me what three plays during the game are going to make the difference. Well, because you don't know which one they are, you have to work hard to be accountable. You have to do it every single play and that mental toughness that they're going to bring in to this season as a team to grow and learn from that's important. Towards the end zone, overthrown to C.J. Brown. And give a lot of credit to somebody who will be speaking with shortly, Hunter Yurchek, the athletic director here for Arkansas. In today's day and age, when a coach goes four and eight, everyone's saying, fire him, get, get rid him out. of him. Get him out. And you know, I think, I think that's a big thing. When you look at it, you say, okay, well, where, where's the program at? We're four and eight, we had some tough, we, we lost some close tough games. What's the attitude within the program? Are the kids gonna come back? Are they gonna respond? What type of team do we have the potential to have next season? Can you give them credit to sit there and say, hey, we trust this coach. Oh, here goes our man, Braylon Russell, the minibus. <laughs> Uh, 
Again, don't forget, that was 252 pounds coming at you. Yeah, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to, you're not gonna ankle tackle this guy. <laughs> Look, again, good blocking up front, but you watch him right here. One foot in the ground on the cut. Anyway, throwing yourself down on his legs right there ain't gonna cut it. You better get some friends and bring them to the party if you wanna go try to tackle the big man in the open field right there. Braylon Russell with that touchdown run. <laughs> man. Woo. He moves those feet That's pretty That's a decision well. you have to make if you want to step in front of him <laughs> right there. Can you share how it all went down? I know those yeah. secret Coach yeah. AD yeah. meetings yeah. that happen right. sometimes. You've been a give, part of those? I, 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 <laughs> one or two. Give, give us a little taste of how that whole, because I, I it came as a shock probably to a lot of people yeah, in the sure. college athletics. I mean, Coach took the meeting with me at, as a favor to John Tyson. John Tyson's one of our major donors. Him and Coach Cal have been friends for a long time, just under the premise of, hey, let's just talk about our program and some of the candidates and give me your thoughts. And as he continued to talk about our program and gush over, you know, this being a top 10 basketball program, a place you could get to the final four and win a national championship. I said, Coach, if it's that good, why don't you want to be here? <laughs> and um, he sat back in his chair and I could tell he had a little bit of an interest. And then huh. we just started to kind of build that conversation from there. That would be a, that's a pretty good one. I, it it yeah, is. Um, there may be, is there another, you might save some for the book one day? Or yeah, no? absolutely. As you know, <laughs> these coaching search, there's a lot else that happened that I'm going to put in the book for sure. In it, TV, yeah. we call that a tease. I don't yeah. know what we call that yeah. in, in literature. But I'd love to tell you it was that smooth, but it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, another coach, Bobby Petrino. He's back, offensive coordinator. Obviously an incredible run as the head coach here. What's it like having him back here? He's been great for Sam and, and our staff. You know, I think one of the things that Sam missed last year, you know, still only in his fourth year as a head coach, is having someone like Barry Odom, who had been a former head coach that was on his staff when things got down or he needed to run a decision by him about personnel or a player or whatever. He didn't have that last year. Mm -hmm. And Bobby's brought that to the table. And then Bobby's just got an incredible offensive mind. And so the two of them, are working very well together and Bobby seems to have blended very well with our entire staff. We were talking before that in today's era it's so rare that when a coach has a bad season not to get rid of him. You being the athletic director I'm sure you face pressure. How did you stay with Coach Pittman? Well, I, I, going into the last game of the season last year against Missouri, I put a chart on his table that had gone through and done his four seasons. Remember, his first season was COVID. We hadn't won an SEC game in multiple years. We went three and seven in an all SEC schedule. The next year we go nine and four. The next year we go seven and six. Yeah, things didn't go our way last year, but his record was still 24 and 24. Um, you go back to the history of our program, we have not had many winning right. seasons. Right. Uh, we've only three times during our history we have we won back to back to back, had back to back winning seasons. And so um, I told him just to hang in there. He was going to be our head coach, and we were going to work together to get this program back to where we wanted it to be. And he's brought some exciting players we're seeing out here on the field. He, he has, for today. sure. I mean, you have a chance now and with the transfer portal and NIL to really fix your team and your program fairly quickly. Now, you can make some mistakes and it can go the other way, but you have a chance to do some things that are really special. Okay, let's talk about the college football playoff committee. You're on it. You're sure. part of it. It's <laughs> yeah. expanding. Not that you didn't have enough yeah, on your right. plate already. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so yeah. you've done a heck of a job here. Uh, back in Phoenix last last week and they give you this laptop that's got incredible an incredible amount of statistical information analyzing the top 30 40 programs um, it's amazing the type of data and access to film that they give you to make that selection so you're equipped with as much information as you need to evaluate that plus you're supposed to watch some football games <laughs> and, and really to see you know that eye test to me is a true thing you can mm -hmm. look at the stats and see if the stats mirror up to your your eye test because you've got to do your job on that committee and watch football games. I, I've already prepared my wife for, um, I've got a reason now to watch a lot more college football this fall. Well, one, <laughs> one last question for you. Uh, Landon Jackson got married last Saturday. He did. Did you go? Um, I did not go uh, to his <laughs> wedding. No, I had a few things going on last week, but I heard it was a beautiful wedding. My son's girlfriend that uh, works down at SMU, uh, she came up and sp uh, spent the night with us that Saturday night and said it was a great wedding and a lot of fun awesome. for Landon. Well, Hunter, so, thank you so much for joining us. It's my pleasure. Congratulations. Thank you. Congrats, Congrats on everything. Yes. Thank you very much. It's been a great spring so far. Thank you. That was the athletic director, Hunter Yerichek, joining us here during the spring game for Arkansas. It's a 32-6 game right now. And 
I tell you what, what is happening here, there is real excitement. Well, and, and the excitement around athletic departments, and it's not about one thing right now. I mean, anybody watching today's game has got to be excited to come watch this offense next fall out on the football field. But right now, you have baseball, like we showed. Yes. All the different sports, it creates excitement around the university, bringing in John Calipari, the, the, I mean, the winning. Winning breeds winning. Mm -hmm. And trust me, on, on college campuses, one thing that's different, these athletes all get to hang out together. They eat together. They're at the different training tables. They see each other at all the different athletic events. And when you're winning in one sport, it kind of starts to steamroll for the others. And I think you're seeing that momentum throughout the entire athletic department here at Arkansas. I mentioned that big salad that I had last night. I was yeah. watching the Arkansas-Alabama baseball game, and it was a close one. Oh, what a great hit there by Dean to stop a touchdown. Carson Dean just playing the wood right there. Looked like it from the two young guys, the young quarterback over out to the young running back. Looked like it was going to be an easy walk and score. And he closed that distance in a hurry to make the big hit and keep him out of the end zone. By the Frisco, Texas, stopping Jezreel Becker on second and goal. And this time it's in. Becker with the touchdown here. But last night, I mean, the fans at this place watching the baseball game were going nuts when they win. I mean, they are ecstatic about what is going on. Uh, and we, we talked about it with the attendance of baseballs. Well, C.J. Brown just had a 75-yard touchdown reception for the white team as we have less than eight minutes to go, and we are joined now by... The newly married Landon Jackson. And we know <laughs> if Landon was out there on defense, there's no way that pass is going for 75 yards. Landon, thanks for joining us. Um, first of all, congratulations on getting married. That's a heck of a story. Uh, how's married life treating you so far? Uh, it's only been a week, but it's been pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> good yeah. answer. You you missing the scrimmage last week, I think. Uh, started the, the marriage off on the right note, correct? Yeah, yeah, no, it did. <laughs> we, we have a picture of... The wedding right here that we're showing right now on TV. Uh, so cool. Your wife, Grace, she's going to graduate in May. Yes, you, sir. You guys have been together since you were 15 years old. An amazing story. So we we'll talked about that yesterday. Let's talk about what happened today on the football field. Okay. You're the leader of this defense. Yes, sir. What do you think of how did you play? Uh, I feel like our defense played really good all together. We were flying around, making plays. Uh, we had to shut out the first half with the one defense out there. So I don't think we really could have done much better. I think there was one drive where, uh, I mean, they got about 40 yards, but I mean, clean up some plays right there. But overall, we've had a pretty good day. Landon, everyone keeps talking about the, the mindset, the attitude around the program. What's different with this year's team in your mind, not just on the field, but off the field? Yeah, just the work, the work ethic all around. I mean, we're every, day in, day out, putting in the extra time, uh, doing all we can to be the best version of ourselves every day. And I think that's really uh, showing right now in the spring game. I mean, our one offense, I mean, driving down the field, making plays, Taylor looked great, uh, JJ looked great. Our, I mean, one defense, I think we had three, four, three and out. So, I mean, it's really the work showing right now. So we just got to continue to work and uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to pay off this fall. You mentioned to us yesterday when we spoke, but how about that first conversation you had on the phone with Taylor when you found yeah. out he was coming to Arkansas? Oh, yeah, that's, I mean, I knew he was a dog at that moment. I mean, uh, once he committed, I think Coach Pittman got me and him on the phone together. And uh, just, just the, I mean, the way he speaks, you could tell he's a leader. And he came in and really let it be known that he's going to lead this team and do all he can to uh, uh, really bring, bring this team uh, another step. And uh, he's done that since he's been here. I mean, he puts in the extra hours. Uh, the coaches have to force him out the facility. So, I mean, nobody's a, nobody's a harder worker than him. So, I mean, he's he's doing great. Well, I think you're a pretty hard worker, too. Yeah. So, it's for the two of you guys, you got some good leaders on this team. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for joining us. Congratulations on the marriage and good luck this offseason and uh, and especially in the fall. For sure. Appreciate y'all having me. Thank you so yep. much. Landon Thanks, Jackson Landon. joining us. I mean, again, Landon, of course, they may make some more changes as we go forward, but that's going to do it from fateful Arkansas for the red and white spring game. A reminder that all games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live.